My name is Chris Abani. Uh, I'm a novelist, a poet, a screenwriter, an essayist. I'm originally from Nigeria, but also partly English, so <laughs> London as well. Uh, I live in LA and uh, I'm in Pittsburgh uh, for the Cave Canon workshops. The question people always ask me is where do you get your ideas from? Um, it's, I never know how to answer that, you know, it's, it's a collage. Yeah, so that's the question I think, it's not that I hate it, but it's the hardest to answer sometimes. Yeah. Um, well, I don't know. <laughs> uh, color is an interesting word, and then black follows it, because then black is one color, but parts of color suggest shades. Uh, and a spectrum, I, I don't know. I don't even know what black means. Uh, I'm black middle class Nigerian, but also half English, so half white. Does it mean black Haitian? Does it mean black working class Jamaican? So there is no blackness, right? I think the harder pressure is because the, the mainstream, the dominant culture is white. So a, a historical perspective that is loaded with cultural references belonging to that hegemonic whole tend to be what obtains. And so black poets may struggle with the idea of how to locate a fringe history uh, while at the same time creating a work of art. When we say writing, people think it's that writing is writing. But actually, writing is editing. Otherwise, you're just taking notes. Yeah. So, in a sense, then the entire project of a writer is to figure out their process. And process is a mixture of strange things like ritual, which is when you write. Are you a daytime, nighttime writer? Do you write every day? Or are you are a writer like me who goes months without writing a word and then uh, splurges out and in three months has 300 pages? Those things are things that are, that are more personality-based than they're actually craft or art-based. For me, the, the process starts always, almost always with a title and then fragments of images and sometimes a character will emerge and then you start to chase this idea and you find that maybe 17, 18 drafts later of a whole novel or in a poetry book, the way you started, if you are lucky, is completely different from where you end up because where you start is always limited by, well, the limits of your conscious mind and therefore its need to solve a riddle. But the thing that makes art beautiful is that it's operating almost at the level of the unconscious. It would depend on who downloaded it and where in the world they were downloading it. If they were in a Western context, I wouldn't be so much offended as I would be surprised because you can clearly afford the book. Like the downloadable books, even when they come out that year, they're $9.99. So it's not, it's not a sum, it's like a Big Mac meal. So for me, it's not so much an offensive issue. It's a question of why would you not value this thing that has the potential to, to have a connection with you that is beyond what you can imagine. But in terms of anywhere else in the world, I would be completely flattered by that. The idea that someone, and I suppose even deep down here, I think, so of all the things you wanted to jack, it was a book. That is incredible to me. I mean, you could you'll smash a window and steal stuff out of a car, steal a computer, but what you wanted to steal was a book. That is, not only is it flattering to me as a, as a writer, but it's kind of mind-blowing for me in terms of, uh, of, of sort of the consciousness that does that. That, that, that was so hungry for a book that they will do anything for it. That, that, that could not offend me. It will offend my publishers and I understand they put money into this stuff. Uh, and, but, but you know, I don't think that it's, there's a large-scale piracy of, of books. I'm not worried about that. But I think it's, it's flattering. I think it will be very flattering, yeah.